Starfire gets a visit from her sister, Blackfire. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I'm getting wicked deja vu right now. While Blackfire is chilling with the Titans, she has Starfire dress up like her so she can take the fall for her crimes. I'm gonna stop you right there. <laughs> Your butt looks fantastic in that skirt. <laughs> you think that's weird? Check this shit out. Hey Robin, anyone ever tell you you have a nice butt? How was this shit allowed to air on Cartoon Network? And I don't mean to be a dick, but I guarantee if the genders were flipped, you guys would be flipping your shit on Twitter. What is it that is missing? I know. Oh. <laughs> Why, how did this get allowed on TV? Anyway, with Starfire in jail, the Titans decide to teach Blackfire how to be a better sister. This is another predictable and basic episode. When it comes to teaching her, it starts with Blackfire not doing all that well. But after a flashback, she starts to become a better person. Well, who didn't see that coming? Then Starfire breaks out of jail and proceeds to beat the shit out of her. They have an emotional moment, and what do you know, they end up making up at the end. Almost. It doesn't help that this episode feels like it's copying elements from the original Teen Titans episode, Sisters, except the writing and characters in that episode were way better than this episode. I'm serious, who's the toughest person you know? Raven. Just another three seasons to go and this ship will finally sail. And do you think I started out that way? Nope. I used to be an average, normal-looking Joe, minding my own business, when suddenly... <gasps> Fire! Brimstone! Why? So I guess we're just gonna ignore the dog hand episode then. Okay, cool, awesome. After an accident resulting in Beast Boy getting a scar on his face, he believes it makes him look tough, so he intentionally starts losing body parts and replacing them with robotic parts to make himself look like a man. I like that Cyborg tries to tell Beast Boy that losing body parts isn't cool, and it makes sense for him to say that because he lost all of his body parts. But it's pretty obvious that the show wouldn't have Beast Boy looking like this for the entire series, so this whole conflict is pretty pointless. <sighs> it's fine, I guess. Aqualad starts simping over Raven, which pisses off Beast Boy to no end, so the two start fighting over Raven's affections, and there's a dumb little side plot of Cyborg thinking that Aqualad is a pirate, which isn't funny. R, she be three doors down on ye starboard side, matey! So, down the hall? Hi, matey! While I thought the ending was... okay, the setup between Beast Boy and Aqualad was pretty predictable. We know Raven's not gonna fall for him, even though the episode tries desperately to make you think such. I will say the final fight between Beast Boy and Aqualad was pretty fun to watch, even though they don't show most of it. You're not gonna fight back. Look, if you assholes are gonna be brooding and violent, at least have the guts to actually show it. A pretty predictable episode with a pretty good ending. Guys, I stayed up all night making this amazing video, and I wanted to share it with my closest friends. Oh, wonderful! We'll share away, bro! Somebody's flexing their creative muscles! Why not? Huh. They're not acting like dicks. This is a major red flag. Robin tries to get re-elected for team leader. So to do that, he starts making smear campaigns against the other Titans. What? I need to remind you that they're not even running, so Robin's just being a dick. The election for team leader is coming up, and I'm ready to do whatever it takes to win. But I'm not even running against you. No one is. Exactly. I crush my opponents before they even start. You dick! To teach him a lesson, the Titans use a time machine to bring George Washington to the present to teach Robin a lesson about what being a true leader is, but Robin automatically assumes that George Washington is trying to go against him. There's 
such an asshole! I'm not a political person, I don't care much for politics, and therefore, I don't give a fuck about what this episode is trying to say. I will admit, I like the final fight between Robin and George Washington. Freedom Shield! And I noticed this background was we used from the Left Like episode. Moving on. This is what we do. Shaggy Scooby Doo. Pointless reference. Do you get the pointless reference? I get the pointless reference. Robin takes Starfire on a fake stakeout so he can kiss her, but she ends up taking the stakeout pretty seriously, to the point where she makes a persona named Jeff. Not quoting the meme. And while that's going on, Cyborg and Beast Boy try to do their own stakeout, but instead of spying on a villain, they decide to spy on Raven. I thought that Starfire's Jeff persona was pretty fun to watch. The side plot was pretty... Eh? Eh. We don't know what's going on with Raven because we're too busy watching Cyborg and Beast Boy dicking around for half of the runtime, with these idiots constantly thinking that Raven has a crush on Beast Boy, which she does, but that's not the problem here. It sucks because I was pretty intrigued by what was going on. A decent episode, all things considered. The Brain kidnaps the Titans so that he can use their powers for this little project he's creating. So this leads to the Titans' as little buddies to go and save them. An above average episode in my opinion. I thought it was pretty fun to see the little buddies go and save the Titans. I appreciate that they're not overpowered. They have their strengths and they have their weaknesses. Sure, there are some weak moments, like the Titans, excluding Robin, giving up after eight months of being in a cage. What is, dude? I ain't digging nothing. Brian said if we're good, he'll let us have a TV. He is evil, but fair. I, I really hope whoever created this show is dead. I'm, I'm kidding, though. I'm, I'm joking. I'm kidding. It just goes to show that they are the worst heroes ever. And y'all better not excuse this shit in the comment section, cause I'll be pissed off. Anyway, aside from that, it's a pretty fun episode with some really good action and some humorous moments here and there. Beast Boy begins to reconnect with Mother Nature after he loses his powers, and after three weeks the Titans decide to go look for him. This episode reminds me of that Spongebob episode, Nature Pants, except I think this episode has a better set of jokes, mainly relating to Robin acting like a fucking animal the second he gets into these woods. Out here, you take every meal you can get. You never know when you'll have a chance to eat again. Okay, crazy. You just ate a sandwich five minutes ago. Although I didn't like the gag of him constantly eating butterflies. I mean, shouldn't he be dead by now? Because the last time a cartoon character ate a butterfly, this happened. Wait, they say a single flap of a butterfly's wing can cause a hurricane on the other side of the world. So what would have happened if I'd never stepped on- Don't worry, a hug will cure you! The main plot is... okay, I guess. Even though it's the typical plot of bringing a civilized character into the realm of Mother Nature. God, I wonder how many shows have done that plot. It ends with Beast Boy having Mother Nature change the forest and turning it into a modern civilization. Are you I'll give Spongebob credit. He didn't do this shit. Ah, <laughs> oh, look at these little scamps. Are you done? I love old people. Okay, that's a goddamn lie, considering the fact that you didn't care about them in the pizza episode. Uh, you sure you don't want to reconsider the pool idea? Raven, very dickishly, has Mad Mod take away the Titans' youth, and now they're stuck as old people. No! Don't do it! Don't turn them into the cutest thing ever! <sighs> you fucking bitch. And when they croak, Raven has no choice but to go to the underworld to get them back. This is probably Raven's worst episode as she deliberately has her friends turn old for her own sick fetish. <sighs> this is so precious. Asshole! 
Another problem with this episode is that it has very repetitive humor. It just makes the same jokes about how old the Titans are. Hey Siri, cut the call. While I will admit I did like the Soul Collector song, this episode is just not good at all. It kind of butchered my favorite character. Now they're old and undead. My two favorite things. What the fuck, man? God damn! Fuck this shit! And before people say this is totally in character for Raven because in the Dreams episode she dreamed about killing her friends, let's be real, she would never follow through on that act. So yeah, it completely ruins her character. Hopefully they can fix this up in the next episode. Not. Another typical making the dumb character smart episode. Okay, it may not be beat for beat, but the concept is still there. You see, Star, it's all about adding a little style into what you're trying to say. Here's how you do it. No, 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 no musicals. No. Starfire is sick and tired of not knowing basic human knowledge. So Raven gives her a magic relic that gives her infinite human knowledge, which leads to her getting a big head. That book is so overrated. I'll save you some time. Everyone dies in the end. <laughs> yep, I hope you like that being regurgitated multiple times throughout the episode. <laughs> Shut the fuck up! What can I say? It's a typical making the dumb character smart episode. We know this change isn't permanent. Not to mention, it teaches the message that if you're smart, you're a total bummer. Look at this chart, and you'll see there's a direct correlation between knowledge and being a bummer. You know a lot, and you bum everyone else. It sucks. Moving on. Wasn't there a seagull sitting there in Season 1? I really hope we have an episode dedicated to that song later down the line. Hint, hint. There's a power outage at the tower, which sucks for Cyborg because he's scared of the dark. So the Titans decide to have a slumber party to help him overcome his pathetic fear. Does anyone really like it when Batman shows up? It's a serious question, by the way. It's your typical slumber party episode. There are some decent lines here and there. You wear that to bed? Just part of my never-ending war on crooked teeth. I shall never surrender. But most of it is just... Eh. Eh. The only thing that makes this episode bearable is the third act, when Cyborg is forced to play Scary Terry, his greatest fear. And I like how they reuse some of the games they play throughout the episode to try and beat her with. Hey, Cyborg. You know the best part about slumber parties? Pillow fight! Yeah! Ah! Oh! Pillow fight! Ooh, ooh, Titans, I know an activity to take Cyborg's mind off of his fear. The game of candor or audacious undertaking? You mean truth or dare. Candor or audacious undertaking! Ugh, I love this game. You know what I realized when watching this episode? It's a complete rehash of the Fear Itself episode from the original. I know a lot of people will be pissed off at me for constantly pointing out how this show's episodes are so similar to the original's episodes, but you shouldn't be mad at me. You should be mad at this show for being so fucking lazy. But the thing is, this episode is much worse because... Well, remember when Raven had to learn on her own that it's okay to be afraid, but that doesn't mean you're not strong? Well, instead of Cyborg learning this message by himself, Robin just tells him this message because show don't tell isn't a thing anymore. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I, I am afraid. I'm a 
afraid. But that doesn't mean I can't fight back. You can do this. Just because you're scared doesn't mean you're not strong. And guess what? At the end of the episode, he's still scared of the dark. Ah! Eight odd monster! I'm not even mad, right? I'm just disappointed. And fucking mad as well, actually. I need to collect spell ingredients to banish these demons back to Azeroth. And I can't take them with me. Keep an eye on them while I'm gone. Oh yeah, Raven. That's fucking genius on your part. Raven possesses this box that has some evil beings living inside. So in order to dispose of them, she needs to get some ingredients. Not this shit again. This might be a good spot to find some ingredients. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. Instead of making the smart decision to just leave the box in her room, she decides to put it in her teammates' hands. You're, you're a fucking idiot. And this is bad because lately Starfire has been on this Care Bears mindset that anything can be fixed with hugs and kisses. Everyone stand back! Please don't explode. You guys have seen the movie Gremlins, yes? Well, that's exactly what this episode is like. Despite being told by Raven not to give these things love and attention, Starfire gives them love and attention anyway, which leads to them turning into this. What's happening? The egg is hatching! It's incredible. Really? No, you dumb fuck! Maybe this whole premise would be interesting to me if it wasn't for the fact that I've seen this concept done multiple times. It's not original, it's just boring. Anyway, eventually the episode ends with the Titans getting their asses whooped even though they used their robot for this fight. And guess what? These creatures get taken down by Starfire being mean to them. And I have a question. How many times are you going to flip-flop with Starfire's character? In one episode, you tell me she wants to handle things peacefully, but in another episode, she's kicking ass with no problem. Pick one. You can't just flip-flop like this. Um, your Kerpuffin is like Glorvac on a Oh! <laughs> Girl, I did not know you could be so cold! What are you talking about? Starfire has been cold on more than one occasion. It's not like this is something that's entirely new to her. And guess what? Similar to the last episode, Starfire doesn't learn her lesson, and then this happens. No! You stupid bitch! <laughs> I could go back. Well, too bad you can't, baby hands. Oh! You got some baby hands! I do not have baby hands! Again with the baby hands gag? You know what? I'm gonna ruin this episode's concept, because if you've seen previous episodes where Robin doesn't have his gloves on, they look pretty normal to me. So yeah, get fucked, show. During their fight with Brother Blood, he shocks Beast Boy, Cyborg, Raven, and Starfire with a beam that causes them to lose their memories. And Robin is ecstatic about this because he sees this as an opportunity to get the Titans to respect him. <laughs> if only that beam killed them, then we wouldn't have to watch eight seasons of this show, now would we now? Wow, I used to be a blanket, and now I'm a real girl. Thanks, Robin. Aww. <laughs> okay, that's pretty adorable. And I did like this little flashback that Robin had at the beginning of the episode. I remember our very first mandatory meeting. Things were so different. Welcome to the very first mandatory meeting of the Teen Titans. Uh, I should have taught them to respect me when they were still fresh and impressionable. But this episode is a blame rehash of salty cultures and brain food. We're dealing with the same concept of one of the members ruling the other Titans through an accident that occurred. That's all. <music> 
Trigon's pissed off that Raven didn't get him anything for Father's Day. So after Starfire gives him a gift, Trigon decides that he likes Starfire and he starts hanging out with her more, much to Raven's annoyance. And while that's going on, Cyborg, Beast Boy, and Robin try to get out of the Earth's core. Hey, look, Mario and Luigi. Anyway, this episode is not that great. The main plot is predictable because it's pretty obvious what Trigon's doing when he's hanging out with Starfire. He's doing this so that he can cause a rift between Starfire and Raven's friendship. It's so obvious that a monkey could see through his facade. And the side plot is really repetitive as it just consists of Robin inspiring Beast Boy and Cyborg and then they get hurt for listening to him. No! When all seems lost, you must hold on to three things. Friendship, courage, and most important, heart. Oh my gosh, dude. I'm so inspired right now. Let's go. I can't hear you. Yes, now follow me. Then of course, we will survive together. Oh no, I'm starting to feel inspired again, bro! Hey, nothing happened! Yeah, I guess we're gonna be okay! <laughs> Even with that, the side plot doesn't make any sense to me. Cyborg and Beast Boy don't listen or respect Robin on any conceivable level. So why are they listening to him when he gives an inspirational speech? Wouldn't they tell him to shut up or at least tune him out? Even with that, this episode sucks. I would never abandon those strong enough to call themselves Teen Titans. Also, stop showing the original Teen Titans. Just stop it. Robin's sandwich goes missing, so he interrogates each member of the Teen Titans to see if they ate it. My butt looks so good in these tights. Looks like you have an alibi. Do we need to talk? <laughs> okay, I like that line. After interrogating each and every single one of them, he decides to go into the future to interrogate himself. I'm not even about to say nothing. I'm just done. And when that doesn't work, they decide to use a teleporter, then they end up on a sandwich planet, and then it turns out that Robin's sandwich has become fully sentient, and it plans to destroy other life forms because it sees itself as superior. What the fuck? I would say this episode is a little more humorous compared to the other episodes we've seen, and I thought the final battle at the end was pretty decent, below average, but still watchable. However, I do have one question. Remember this line from the Baby Hands episode? Those were the days. If only I could go back. It's revealed in this episode that Robin does have a time machine. So why didn't he use it in the Baby Hands episode? I don't fucking know. Oh no, Sparkle Face. The Cotton Candy Grove isn't growing because there hasn't been a shower in weeks. But it rained just yesterday, Butterbean. Not that kind of shower, silly. Okay, this whole parody of My Little Pony is getting annoying. They won't turn down their loud, loud music. Have you not tried using the extreme violence? Hey, do you guys remember how Starfire is supposed to be, like, the peaceful one in the group? I remember. Look, this world may seem ridiculous to you, but these cotton candy bushes have gotten me through some dark times. Every My Little Pony fan ever. I just want to clarify that even though this show's demographic was primarily kids, it also had an audience of grown-ass men. <laughs> anyway, for this episode, Control Freak transports the Teletitans... <laughs> um, um, I'm so sorry. The Teen Titans into Raven's favorite TV show, Pretty Pretty Pegasus. This episode is very reminiscent of Breakfast Cheese. You remember how in that episode the Titans, including Raven, were violent as hell and Starfire was the peaceful one? Well, guess what? The roles have flipped in this episode. Now, all of a sudden, Raven is the peaceful one, while the rest of the Titans, including Starfire, are violent as hell. It just goes to show that these bastards didn't learn anything from the Breakfast Cheese episode. Which means we have another episode that's basically a rehash, but with a different coat of paint.
Maybe if I liked My Little Pony, I would like this episode, but uh, the problem is uh, I don't, so, you know. Hey, what time is it? It's my party time! Dude, this layout looks similar to the Meatball Party episode. Are you seriously telling me that you guys couldn't make a new layout? Jesus Christ, that's cheap and lazy. I'll take one steak! One? I got steaks for days! Yeah! Bratwurst, please. Well, at least Raven's not a grump when it comes to meat party time. Hey, bro, throw my veggies on that grill! Veggies? On my beautiful grill? Are you crazy? You guys know he's a vegetarian. For God's sake, he said this in the Meatball Party episode. I love meatballs! But I'm a vegetarian! I'm a vegetarian. That's what I eat every day. And Beast Boy, why don't you just have tofu meat? Oh, right. Then this episode's premise wouldn't have gotten off the ground. Gotcha. Beast Boy teaches the Titans the wonders of being a vegetarian. And like every other episode before this one, they take it too far. Good morning, Beast Boy. Would you like some scrambled vegetables? I did find it mildly amusing that the Titans start loving vegetables so much that they literally end up being in a cult that's run by a giant carrot. <laughs> that's crazy. But other than that moment, I don't really have much to say about this one. The episode ends with all of them eating meat again. So the message of staying in shape and eating healthy, throw that out the window. Because eating meat is so much better. I did take off my mask. Once. For the original Teen Titans. Titans, listen up. I'm getting really sick and tired of when they reuse old footage from the original Teen Titans. That shit is really annoying. The Titans want to know what's under Robin's mask. So after multiple attempts, Robin eventually shows them his face. And then this happens. <gasps> this episode is fucking stupid. And it's not enjoyably stupid, it's like really, really, really stupid to watch. Eventually an alien comes out of nowhere to take Robin because of his handsome face, and then this happens. Oh, this is so fucking weird. But you know what? As much as I trash on this one, it is mildly amusing. It's not gut-bustingly funny, but it's decent. Probably the worst episode of the series so far. Because the Titans spend way too much time in the bathroom, Robin puts a timer on it. And because every single one of them couldn't beat the timer, they don't go into the bathroom at all, which leads to them looking like this. <laughs> What has happened? Your hygiene! Your five minute standard killed the magic for us. We don't even bother to go into the bathroom now. You're disgusting. So eventually Robin asks them what makes the bathroom so special. Again, as I said before, this is probably the worst episode in the series. Now, you think I would get on Robin for putting a timer on the bathroom. In reality... No. He has a right to be annoyed because the stuff that they do in there is just so stupid. Whether it's Raven's tap dancing, Cyborg singing, Beast Boy doing his stupid steam paintings, or Starfire using the toilet to make chili. They could literally do these activities anywhere else. And the third act of the episode is really, really dumb. Because now that Robin understands the wonders of the bathroom, he ends up loving it to the point where he doesn't come out. If you want this bathroom, you're gonna have to take it from me. I'm surrounded by idiots. You know, if this episode was smart, this would have been Robin's way of teaching the others about hogging the bathroom. But no, he has to be just as stupid as the others. And then the episode ends with all of the bathrooms in the world leaving because of Robin. This episode is terrible.
Tonight, darkness shall creep over the land. Terror will walk the streets. And children will shriek in fear. For tonight, we will face our greatest demons. Happy Halloween! <laughs> you see? You know, it's funny how Raven can go from I don't care about anything to being happy and cheerful. I guess since she's half demon and she loves Pretty Pretty Pegasus, I guess that evens itself out. It's Halloween time and the Titans aren't excited for it, so Raven decides to summon the Halloween spirit to make them scared of Halloween again. By turning them into kids. You're bullshitting me! No, I'm not! Yeah, it seems like a rehash of Salty Codgers, but I really enjoyed this one. And unlike that episode where Raven did that deed for her own selfish motivation, here, it's a little understandable. She wants to go trick-or-treating not only because she's a demon, but because it's that special time of year where she can enjoy something with her friends. Why do you care so much anyways? Because I'm half demon. And, you know, I like doing scary stuff with you guys. Okay, that was pretty sweet. So yeah, this was another good episode. Good job. Hey, you guys remember when I said that Serious Business was the worst Teen Titans Go episode? Well, I lied. This episode is the worst. The premise is all about the boys and the girls going against each other to see which gender is superior. This episode consists of nothing but stereotypes, sexism, and a generic battle of the sexes storyline. Robin, Beast Boy, and Cyborg are obnoxious and unbearable as they keep spouting the same sexist bullshit throughout the episode. I'll tell you her problem. She's a her. You know, a girl. <laughs> That's right. She wishes she could be a boy. <coughs> but she can't. <gasps> Boys are better than girls! <laughs> if you ever took the knowledge train downtown to the corner of science and fact, you know girls could never compete with boys because they're too busy lying around, thinking about how they look, and being emotional. <laughs> As you can see from this chart, created by a boy, science tells us that there is no evidence in girls of sugar, spice, or anything nice. SHUT THE FUCK UP! I would say Raven and Starfire are decent, but then they get that obnoxious WOMEN ARE SO MUCH BETTER moment at the end of the episode. <sighs> Think we lost them? Impossible! <gasps> we have more of the endurance. We're smarter too. <laughs> We are the stronger. Shut the fuck up! There's two obnoxious rap numbers in here. Robin giving Starfire and Raven cooties is messed up given the fact that they're supposed to be his friends. And also, cooties, really? I'm going to sum it up in just one word. Cooties! <gasps> You're crawling with them! We don't want your cooties! <laughs> cooties? It's true! Girls have cooties! We wanna be boys again! I hate you. I, I really, really do. They're called the Teen Titans, not the Toddler Titans. And the episode ends with a shitty message that women are better than men. Even though we all know that's not true. We are equal to each other. We have our strengths and we have our weaknesses. There's no such thing as one gender being superior to the other. It's brainless and fucking idiotic. And if you have that mindset that men are better than women, or women are better than men, you're a goddamn idiot. An awful episode, moving on. Boys rule! B -b -b -boys. Shut up! Shut your fucking mouth, you're so annoying. Oh my god. Sorry you're feeling sick, bro. Hopefully the soup will help. This should keep you nice and warm. Huh, they're acting nice. This is really weird. It's every superhero's dream to shrink down to the size of a germ and to explore the miracle of the body. You kind of did that already. Robin shrinks himself in the hopes of having a body adventure, but when Cyborg says no, he just dicks around while being small. My body is not an adventure to be had! We think you should unshrink yourself, Robin. Indeed. I feel like I am being watched wherever I go. It's not like you assholes respect or listen to him, so why should he do the same? 
It's a decent episode. I say this episode gets better when we see the Titans shrink down to microscopic size, exploring the living room, and then eventually Cyborg's body. Ooh, that looks kind of far. Perhaps we should have gotten closer to my body first. Body adventure! Hmm, where to next? I know! Reminds me of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I say this episode is a vast improvement compared to the last episode, so that's why it gets a high score. Yeah, I've been tinkering, tweaking, and straight up improverating everything on the T car. Ripping off car trouble, huh? Also, look, Cyborg came back to life. No, 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 don't hang up! Huh, this is why you're my best friend and only true confidant. You act as if you hold more affection for the vehicle than for us, Cyborg. I do! You guys are garbage compared to my baby! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they are garbage, aren't they? And I love you guys! Aw, he said he loved us. He also called us garbage. You are trash, nigga! Big fucking trash. I feel your pain, guys. Trust me, I feel your pain. Cyborg takes the team out for a road trip. It's a pretty simple episode that didn't annoy me. I thought it had some pretty chuckle-worthy moments. Uh-oh, look out, that's my jam. Uh-uh, we're not doing that. Oh, so you get to control the radio? What's up with that, man? I was about to get my groove on. You see my cape flying there? Get your cape out of my face! <laughs> And the third act of the episode was very entertaining with the Hive getting back at the Titans for being dicks to them throughout the episode. A pretty decent episode, all things considered. Mwah! Perfection. Thanksgiving style. Woo! Thanksgiving! You just can't fucking help yourself, can you? It's Thanksgiving time, and Robin has plans to make sure that this is the best Thanksgiving ever. And it goes out the window real quick. Because Trigon shows up to ruin things by transforming Cyborg into a turkey with the intent to eat him, Beast Boy invites a bunch of rats, and Starfire acts like a typical sports fan. Oh, so that makes it okay to eat one of my friends? I chose the one you like least. I like Robin the least. We can eat him too. Okay, that's really weird. I thought you would hate Cyborg or Starfire the most, but whatever. You had one job. One. Make a decent Thanksgiving special, and you couldn't even do that right. You blew it! You had it all and you blew it! The problem with this episode is that it paints Robin as the antagonist for wanting to make sure that this Thanksgiving goes well. Even though Raven and her father are constantly fighting over Cyborg, Beast Boy constantly inviting rats over to eat all of the food, despite Robin telling him not to do so, and Starfire just being there. And for some reason, all of the fuck-ups that happen throughout this episode are said to be Robin's fault. I guess I ruined Thanksgiving for everyone. Yes. You did. The fuck did you just say? I don't want to waste time on this one. It sucks. Moving on. You change it. Remote's closer to you. Oh. Oh, never mind. Just attach your arm and grab the remote, you lazy fuck. You've done it before already. What is up with this team lately? Being a superhero is hard. Sometimes a period of the vegetabling out is most necessary. Nine times out of ten, all you dumbasses do is sit on your ass and do nothing. What are you talking about? Lately, the Titans have been acting so lazy to the point where they can't even go out and fight crime. It's not like they do that anyway, but whatever. So in response to this, Robin decides to call upon his secondary team, Team Robin. And when that happens, the Titans decide to use the Robins for their own selfish gain. I feel the guilt. Should we not be doing our own work? No way. It's like the old saying, always trick your friends into doing things for you and stuff. 
Why, yes, of course. I do recall I remember that. My one. dad used to say that. I hate you with the dark fire of a million exploding neutron stars. Eventually, Robin gets sick and tired of this, so he kicks out the other Robins and forces the Titans to go fight Brother Blow with him. Then this happens. I know you're all feeling sluggish, but that's okay. I will lead you to victory. We will defeat Brother Blood and prove once and for all that I am the best Robin. How did we get captured? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give the episode credit that these morons admit that they were lazy, but it doesn't make up for the fact that we have to deal with these obnoxious idiots for half of the episode. Even Robin is unbearable in this episode, as he wants to prove that he's the best. And it's made worse by the fact that they added multiple versions of Robin. Pop the glove compartment, Frank. <laughs> Someone's dying today, baby. It's just not a good episode. I'm sorry. Huh. The typical teaching the character to do the thing they suck at doing. God, if I had a nickel for every time I heard that premise. God, can you stop with this gag? It's not funny anymore. It's annoying. Robin doesn't know how to whistle, so the Titans decide to teach him. Oh, dear Jesus Christ, this is Slide Whistle Stooges all over again. Go away! Can't you idiots take a hit? Ugh, there's even a moment where Robin uses a slide whistle. It's like Slide Whistle Stooges from Spongebob. It's really annoying, don't get me wrong, but I thought the third act made whistling really interesting. What? Because the teapot from Beauty and the Beast starts giving Robin lessons on how to whistle, and it does lead to a nice final scene with the hive. It's still annoying as hell though. Beast Boy's room is a goddamn pigsty, so the Titans decide to clean up his room while Raven teaches him how to clean. This episode is fucking gross. I mean, it does give us a reason why Beast Boy has so much trash in his room, and it's because he sees all of this trash as his personal possessions. What are you, drunk? But I'm sorry, the whole personal possessions concept has been done way better in other shows. Not to mention those episodes have better messages compared to this crap. It ends with Beast Boy not cleaning up his room and the Titans accepting this choice 100%. Now do you understand why I keep my room like this? Garbage isn't just a bunch of garbage to be thrown away. Love your garbage and it will love you back. <laughs> Which makes this episode totally pointless. Hard pass. Why is that dude saving that other dude from nothing? And why does he look exactly like you? Except slightly more handsome. You have no taste. I mean, this is the same girl that fell in love with a scratching post. So I shouldn't expect high intelligence from her. The Teen Titans come across Nibor, who is Robin's polar opposite, and the second he comes to the Titans Tower, everyone starts to immediately take a liking to him. Have a seat, Robin. A seat? But, uh, that's the opposite of cardio. Yes, we have called you here under false pretenses to tell you we are making Nibor our new leader. What?! You dickheads don't have the power to do that. Oh wait, yes they do because they don't have any respect for Robin as a leader. Did I mention that all of these characters are assholes? You have mentioned it. This whole episode is a copy and paste of the Mockingbird episode. Ah, uh, here we go. The only thing that makes it tolerable is the whole bizarro element. The concept that there's a world that's completely opposite to the Titans. But even then, that's only introduced in the last three minutes of the episode. And just when Robin is getting along with the opposite Titans, he ends up unintentionally insulting them by complimenting them. Get it? Because it's an opposite world. 
I did it. You gotta work with me on this. It ain't making me laugh, but I did it. Which results in the opposite team trying to get rid of them. Didn't see that one coming, did you? Even with this whole bizarro element implemented into the plot, it doesn't change the fact that this episode is a complete ripoff of the Mockingbirds episode, or even the Gorilla episode. But unlike those episodes where the team realizes that Robin was in the right, this episode ends with them wanting to keep Nybor. We am healthy and rested of Robin. Give us back Nybor later! Ah! Listen up, you backward bozos. We don't want Robin. You keep <laughs> What a bunch of assholes. Oh, what a headache. I really need peace and quiet today. Peace and quiet? In this house? Honey, are you ducking high? It's crazy day, which means the Titans are going to be even more obnoxious than they usually are. And since Raven has a massive headache, she tries to avoid these dumbasses at all costs. But then she ends up getting lost in her own mind. And it turns out that Trigon was behind the scenes manipulating Raven's dreams in the hopes that she would lose her mind. I can't stand this episode. It's too annoying for my taste. I'm not going to waste time talking about this one. Skip. Who the hell eats pizza with a knife and a fork? Recently, Cyborg and Beast Boy have been inhaling their foods instead of chewing them. Because of this, the other Titans are left to starve, so they have no choice but to go under Cyborg and Beast Boy's wings to learn how to inhale their food. Oh, that's not right. This, this isn't mine. Thank and that goes to you. Robin, have you considered eating less of the fish? <sighs> Noted. This is the only part of the episode I found funny. The episode should get a high score just for that. Anyway, once they get fattened up, Cyborg and Beast Boy's bellies start to take over their bodies, which was something Robin warned them about earlier. And be warned, you might be speaking for your belly now, but if you're not careful, one day it will speak for you. What's happening? I warned you about this. You've given your bellies too much power, and now they've taken control. Didn't see that one coming, did you? A really stupid, stupid, stupid episode. I can't stand this one. I mean, it does teach a valuable lesson about not eating like a pig, but still, not a fan of this one. This is the most boring premise I've ever seen. Cyborg wants to be human, so Raven makes him human, and then he starts to experience the drawbacks of being human. It does exactly what you would expect. There's even a moment where Robin helps Cyborg accept that being human is pretty great. And then he hypocritically starts using Cyborg's suit. Not much to say with this one. We all know Cyborg's going to revert back to normal by the next episode. Oh snap! It's the pickle bird! Got any pickles for me? That's not the pickle bird, Beast Boy. Remember when you asked me where babies come from? Bird. <laughs> That's funny. Starfire and Cyborg start acting like children. Okay, remind me again. This show is called Teen Titans Go, right? So why is it in some of these episodes they act like goddamn children? Like, well, They're because it's right funny. It. Anyway, because they keep acting like children, they eventually turn into eggs for some reason. So now the stork is taking them back to, as Robin puts it, a place of hope, discovery, and dreams. You know what? Fuck it. I'm calling it Wonderland. This episode can be annoying with its puns, along with Starfire and Cyborg's flanderization. But you know what? This episode made me laugh. Especially when Robin, Beast Boy, and Raven get to Wonderland and start shooting it up like school shooters. Jesus Christ. It may have a predictable ending with all of them turning into eggs, but whatever, I don't care. This episode was pretty funny. An episode that insults the critics and old fans of the show. 
Robin tries to make the Titans more serious after getting called out by Aqualad. What? Lessons like books can be dangerous? Or what is better, burgers or burritos? You are a mockery of everything the world holds sacred about heroes. Come on, what is so bad about being a little silly from time to time? I am all for a good laugh, but the Teen Titans cannot be serious for one single moment. Fuck yeah! Woohoo! Whoa! It's laughably pathetic how sensitive these writers are. They're so pissed off that people are calling this show shit that they made an episode criticizing them for expecting a cartoon like Teen Titans Go to be serious. <sighs> Could this be the end of the Teen Titans? I thought being serious would bring us closer, but it's only driven us apart. I mean, given the fact that this show is a follow-up to the original, I don't think they're stupid for expecting that. Even when you put that aside, there's just little to no entertainment value in this episode. It's an episode that makes fun of critics and fans for 10 minutes. Let's just keep moving forward. Because of how nice and wonderful she is, I say that with quotations, the Titans go to Starfire's home planet. Remember when Starfire had to go to Tamaran because she was getting married, but then it turned out to be a trap set by Blackfire? That was a good episode. Another predictable episode that does exactly what you would expect, the Titans want to visit Starfire's home planet, and then after spending time there, they realize it's not as great as Starfire herself. But then randomly out of nowhere, Starfire decides to marry that fat disgusting blob we saw in the original Teen Titans episode. And then she tries to ditch the Teen Titans altogether. This is not cool! If Starfire is going to be forced to marry anyone, it's going to be me, Titans. Let's know this marriage. Friends! Why did you blow up my husband? The peace treaty is now broken. The General's army will soon attack and I have dishonored my people. And you are welcome. He was gross. Yeah, super gross. Do you remember when Raven said this in the original Teen Titans episode? You saw her face, Cyborg. She doesn't even like him. True, but maybe she doesn't need to. Things are different here. Who are we to question her culture? So yeah, these cluckers have little to no respect for different cultures, especially their best friend. Another episode that takes a classic episode from the original series and butchers it for an obvious joke. Now the only way to save my planet from the invasion is in a traditional show of bravery by fighting Gridnock the Skull Crusher. And if you don't, this planet will be destroyed? Yes. Sounds good to me. Let's go home. <laughs> Fuck. You two have nothing in common. Yeah, he's about water, he's about rocks. He's a hero, she's a villain. He's a boy, she's a girl. <laughs> okay, that's actually pretty funny. Right off the bat, this episode reminds me of that American Dad episode where Steve and Haley tried breaking up a couple for their own selfish motivations. It's the same case here. Terra and Aqualad start dating, which pisses off Beast Boy and Raven respectively. So they decide to work together to break the couple up. And while that's going on, Robin tries to go on a date with Starfire, but Cyborg ends up being a third wheel. Man, I love being a third wheel. Tagging along, being awkward, getting in the way of true romance. What a dick. <laughs> there are some humorous moments in this episode, but at the same time, it just reminds me of that American Dad episode I mentioned before. Beast Boy and Raven teaming up and getting along was cute, I guess. Kid Flash shows up to join the Teen Titans, and instead of allowing him to be a part of the team, Robin insists that he's a one-trick pony. So this leads to them having a race that ends with Kid Flash being the new leader of the Titans. Didn't see that one coming, did ya? Just watch the previous episodes that are listed on screen. It's a direct copy and paste of those episodes. Not much to say with this one. It ends with Robin being leader of the Titans once more, and it's all because he believed in himself. 
stop flying! Okay, realistically, he cheated by hitting Kid Flash with his staff. Okay. I want everyone's assurance that we will enjoy this pizza responsibly. What are you even talking about, brah? For some reason, every time we eat pizza, we end up fighting over it and running around silly and everything. So you're telling me that pizza is the reason why the Titans are so stupid? After a pizza sugar rush, I guess, Robin places a ban on pizza because he doesn't like how goofy the Titans get. So in response, they throw a hissy fit. We don't mind truth and justice, Robin, but we all join this team for the pizza. And if we can't eat pizza here, then we'll eat with those cool skateboarding turtle dudes. So Robin lifts the pizza ban, and then when he tries to order some pizza, it turns out that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles snabbed every single pizza in Jump City. So the two teams get into a fight. All of this happened because they went crazy while eating pizza. Think about that for a couple of minutes. I didn't find this episode all that funny. And I really don't like how they got the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to be a part of this shit show. But guess what? They won't be the only characters that cross over with this dumpster fire of a show. Money is not to be wasted on things that bring you happiness and joy. Money is to be hoarded until you have enough money that your money makes more money. You know what? That's absolutely right. I'll give you that one. I know someone who might change your mind about that. Oh, well, hi there. I'm money. <laughs> hi, money. Nice to meet you. Again, these characters are so goddamn stupid. I'm surrounded by idiots. Robin tries to get the Teen Titans to respect money, but then the tables end up flipping on him. I'm so glad they didn't get Mr. Krabs from Spongebob to do a crossover with this show. This episode makes me hate the Teen Titans even more because instead of using money, they decide to pay everything using bees. What the hell is happening here? It's another one of those episodes that tortures Robin for trying to teach the Titans a lesson. And then the episode tries to deliver the message that money is the root of all evil, instead of the assholes that have way too much of it. What? This episode is dumb. Or something along those lines. I, I, don't, I don't know. Whatever. And I would like to watch the Crosby Pudding Half Hour Show of Sweaters. Theo, get your glorp knops off your kitchen table. Rudy! Did she just make a Cosby Show reference? Ugh, I'm surprised this show hasn't gotten canceled for that. Ha! Huh. I love stripes! Was it red? You know it was red, and they would protect the innocent from bad guys! Oh, kinda like us. Except they weren't lame! <laughs> it's funny because the show is self-aware of how trash it is. I did it. Get a wank with me on this! It ain't making me laugh, but I did it. Cyborg tries to watch the A-Team, but the remote goes missing. I think we should use this opportunity to take a break from TV. Without TV, you really notice how long every second is. What the- To get their minds off of television, because as overbearing parents would say, TV is poisonous to the minds of impressionable youth. The Titans decide to spend their time doing other activities, and because they're doing that, their brains start to rot because they're not watching TV all the time. Ugh, your brains! They're rotting! But we haven't been watching TV. Exactly! Just as I suspected, TV keeps your brain from rotting by feeding it information in good times! Are you fucking serious? As you can see, this is another episode that teaches a shitty lesson that not watching TV will cause your brain to rot. I'm not a social person, but even I know that lesson is bullshit. Another crappy episode with a shitty message to boot. Titans! 
Islands. On the other side of this door lies a world of adventure, intrigue, and danger. Don't you ever get tired of being excited about everything? Ooh, imagination. And don't you ever get tired of saying, Ooh, to everything Robin says? Yes, I do. I am only trying to be the polite. God, just seeing these assholes be needlessly condescending just makes me want to see them get tossed into outer space and die. <sighs> I'm, I'm really sorry, guys. I, I've been watching this show for too long. Okay, despite my cynical nature, I actually thought this episode was pretty decent. Sure, it is just a bunch of gaming references one after another, but it makes for an entertaining watch. And I did like the references to Legend of Zelda, Pac-Man, Frogger, Spy Hunter, and Mario. Sure, this episode is like the dreams from Season 1, but... Hey, I'll take what I can get. Honestly, one of the better episodes from Season 2 so far. I'm sorry to inform you, but your parole has been denied. Titans, go! More like Titans, go away. Just kick her ass. What the hell are you guys doing? Oh, right. They have to be this stupid so the plot can get started. Fine, but I'm warning you, this is going to hurt. Let's do it. So, you're short. Oh! Thigh-high boots and a midriff. Are you a superhero or a cheerleader? Oh! Quick, count to ten without using your fingers. Okay, Rose. I like you. You're good. Raven ends up being friends with a prison inmate named Rose, much to Robin's dismay. While that's going on, Cyborg, Beast Boy, and Starfire tried to be cool after they got dissed by Rose earlier. It's time to get cool like right, right now! Uh, Mr. Water... God damn! Fuck this shit! It's a pretty predictable setup with Raven taking a liking to Rose, but then at the end of the episode when she tries to kill an old man, she doesn't think she's cool anymore. But honestly, I don't really mind it that much because Rose is a pretty cool character. But here's one thing that this episode made me realize. I don't really like the musical numbers in this show. Most of them are just... bad. And this one is the worst offender. Predictable episode, but it introduced a cool character. God, can you guys go one single minute without screaming into your microphones? The Titans start playing soccer, or football, as it's pronounced. Eventually, they learn that a bunch of monsters are making soccer fun. It's middle of the road, what can I say? This episode's concept reminds me of that grade A under A video called My Brain vs. My Body. And what do you know, it came out December 14th of 2014, while this episode came out May 7th of 2015. Hmm. I'm not saying anything about anything, right? You make your own conclusions. Beast Boy has been neglecting his brain, which results in it shrinking. So Robin suggests a hobby that the two can enjoy. Then this leads to the brain making a tree in Beast Boy's head, eventually growing to the point where it's in the sky. What the fuck? It's terribly unfunny. I mean, the third act is nicely animated, but that's about it. Just watch the original Great A Andre video. It's way better. Forty seconds, and I already want to drink Drano. 
Cyborg and Beast Boy come up with a great idea to make a yearbook. And Robin, being Robin, decides to be extra and do a bunch of stupid shit so he can be seen as the most popular Titan. We're gonna finally commemorate all the highlights of the last year in the form of pictures in the form of a book! Absolutely not. Yearbooks are only popularity contests that leave people with hurt feelings. Wait a minute. You guys want to do a yearbook, but you guys don't even go to school. What the fuck? So yeah, this is another episode where Robin takes things incredibly seriously. I mean, there are some humorous moments in here, specifically when he gets everyone to sign his yearbook, or the fact that he made a multi-billion dollar corporation only to blow it up. But that's about it. be the most likely to succeed when you've already succeeded. It does defeat the whole point of the award. <sighs> hey, look, his hands are normal. They're not baby shaped. Okay, I find it mildly funny that even though they're superheroes, they still have to wait at the back of the line. Uh, it's not fair! Who decided we can't see a movie without an adult? An adult. Exactly! Adults think just because they have jobs and a height advantage that they can do whatever they want. <laughs> okay, that was mildly funny. I'll give them that. Beast Boy discovers that he can turn into... a man. Oy. What? No, I'm not fucking kidding. This is the premise. This is the idea they came up with. Huh. Huh. This episode is literally a copy of Hose Water. One of the Titans does something stupid, the other Titans try to warn them not to do it, but they do it anyway. And then shit like this occurs. But you should turn back before the man, whoever he is, finds you and forces you to get a job. Yeah, well, maybe a job wouldn't be so bad. Unit 052, this work is unacceptable. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to fire you with real fire! I understand. Thank you for the opportunity. Well, who didn't see that coming? There were some chuckle-worthy moments, but overall, this episode is just... blah. Other shows have done the concept of being an adult sucks way better. You think he's in trouble? There's only one way to find out. The Titan Tracker! I implanted one in each of you without either your knowledge or consent. Oh, so that is what my glowy bulge friend is. What a goddamn weirdo. Cyborg is chilling at the Hive's tower because he's spending time with Jinx. So Gizmo decides to take advantage of this by making it look like he's kidnapped Cyborg so that the Titans can pay a ransom for him. Are you telling them you kidnapped me? You couldn't kidnap me if you tried. Hey, Titans, I'm just hanging here with my girl, Chick. <laughs> it's mildly amusing that Cyborg just crashes at the Hive's tower, even though the Teen Titans and the Hive are meant to be enemies. I'm not kidding. I really like this episode. Sure, there's a bit of conflict going on between Cyborg and Gizmo, but they eventually patch things up. And I don't know, seeing Cyborg interact with the Hive in a positive light is just... nice. I, I don't have any other words to describe it. Sure, there's a side plot of the Titans trying to rescue Cyborg, but honestly, I don't care about that side plot. The main plot is pretty good, but the side plot, not too much. This non-meat party is not a party. It's stupid and derivative. Why do you have to be so mean all the time? You guys don't even like non-meat. Of course we don't. We're just being nice to Beast Boy. Wow. That is very considerate. That is- I'm speechless. I am fucking speechless. Because Raven acts so mean, which means nice and mean at the same time, go figure, Trigon curses her, which causes her to be nice to everyone. And while that's going on, Starfire prepares to marry a pot of chili. Oh, but I do love the vegetarian chili. Ugh, if you love it so much, why don't you marry it? Marry the chili? I do love it the so much. You're, you're a fucking idiot. 
God, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but even Total Drama Rama wasn't this fucking stupid. Izzy, put it down. I can't! I love it so much! Then why don't you marry it? You can do that? Um, no. Robin getting jealous at a pot of chili was kind of funny, I guess. But the main plot is a basic switching of a character's personality to be the opposite of said personality. But it was a decent time. My favorite parts of the episode is when Raven cheers Robin up and when Trigon's plan backfires on him. Point being, you can never be too careful. There's a lot of crazies out there. Who doggy? That wasn't scary at all, cyborg. He doesn't have his baby hands in this shot. Stop talking! Robin has taken the Titans out on a camping trip. They get bored immediately, so Robin proposes that each of them should tell a scary story. Similar to the Dream episode and the video game episode, each character's story is very unique and interesting, and they switch up the animation style a little bit. In terms of visuals, the best ones were Robin, Beast Boy, and Cyborg. It's not an outstanding episode, but I thought it was a decent one. Also, Raven's story was the best one. It'd be nice to have a little peace and quiet, but even my magic's not that strong. Raven, in one episode, you literally remove Cyborg's mouth. I'm pretty sure you can come up with something. Raven gets sick and tired of her friends being so loud, so after making a deal with the Whisperer, it eliminates all sounds. I give this episode a high score because it eliminates the main problem with the series. It shuts the characters up for once. Fuck yeah! USA! USA! I find it weird that they paint the Whisperer as the bad guy, because in all honesty, I think he's the good guy. But then they had to ruin it. Azeroth, Metrion, Synthos? Gotcha. The rest of the world may still be silent, but at least we have our voices back. I just can't do it. I can't take this shit no more, man. But then again, it gets kind of interesting when the characters make their own sounds. Some people may say it's like the Waffles episode, but this isn't as infuriating. <laughs> Titans are everywhere we turn, thwarting our schemes, ruining our lives. But not for much longer, because my latest plan... <sighs> One sec. Hello? Hello? Is Fred there? You know, for this show, I feel really bad for the Hive. They constantly have to deal with the Titans' bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> the Titans?! Those guys. Gizmo, Hive, I know exactly how you feel. Trust me, I've watched 100 episodes of this show. I know exactly how you feel. The Hive tries to enjoy their day off, but the Titans end up ruining it. This episode made me feel bad for the Hive because these guys are just minding their own business, doing their own thing, and then these jackasses, with the exception of Raven, just ruin their day. Maybe this wouldn't bother me if the jokes were actually funny, but they're not funny. It's not that funny of an episode. Oh god, I've been dreading this one. After they save the world from Slade... Titans, go! I still can't believe they pulled that bait and switch. So for a celebration, Cyborg and Beast Boy want a clown, but Robin and Raven insist that clowns are for little kids. And when the clown fails to entertain, Cyborg and Beast Boy decide to give it an upgrade. It's a terrible episode that basically makes fun of the critics and fans of the original show. Again. And they send out the message that Teen Titans Go is not for them. It's made for little kids, so you have no right to criticize it. You know, I would agree with this point if it wasn't for the fact that this is a reboot to the original show. 
So obviously people have the right to criticize it for it being a terrible show, and you're clearly just making it for the sake of cashing in on the likeness of the original, like every other Disney live action remake that's being made today. And I really hate the argument of, it's just a kid show, because when you say that, you're basically saying that kid shows are just dumb stupid colors with tons of potty humor and fart jokes. Hey now, does this face look stupid to you? Which basically spits in the face of shows that are intended for kids like Avatar The Last Airbender, Adventure Time, Regular Show, The Amazing World of Gumball, Gravity Falls, The Original Teen Titans, Steven Universe, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Powerpuff Girls, Ed and Nettie, Samurai Jack, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, SpongeBob SquarePants, Hey Arnold, Invader Zim, Fairly Odd Parents, Jimmy Neutron, Danny Phantom, <coughs> My Little Pony Friendship is Magic of all things, and numerous other shows from the 2000s decade to the 2010 decade. Oh, and Infinity Train and Over the Garden Wall. Jesus Christ, how can I forget about those shows? Even in the 2020 decade, there are some kids shows that are filled with substance and good writing. So, if all of these kids shows can have clever writing, good characters, and outstanding looking animation, why does your show get a pass for being shit? Like, if your show was actually funny, I would let this argument slide, but your show, 9 times out of 10, isn't funny. So... SHUT THE FUCK UP! <laughs> wow, I spent this whole segment bitching about the message. As an episode on its own, it's not that funny. I guess there were some funny bits, more specifically Raven lecturing Beast Boy and Cyborg about how clowns are made for kids, yet she watches Pretty Pretty Pegasus. Yeah, clowns are great for little kids. You guys are too old for clowns. Oh yeah? How's season six of Pretty Pretty Pegasus? Oh my gosh, well, Butterbean and Sparkle Face have to say King Jelly Bean has posted frozen in cake rising. <clears throat> That's completely different. This is stupid. All I smell is bullshit. But that's about it, because this episode is so concerned with shoving the message in the viewers' faces that it doesn't even try to be entertaining. It's not that fun to watch. I just want to see that ball drop. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I'd hear Raven say, I want to see the ball drop. <laughs> <laughs> the Titans tried to prepare for New Year's Eve. They tried doing four simple steps in preparation. A toast, doing the countdown, practicing the midnight kiss, and lastly singing the song that nobody knows the words to. Cyborg, toast me. Oh, uh, I'd like to say words. You are people! Cheers! Unacceptable! <laughs> I give this episode a high score because they did all of that practicing, all of that hard work, and it amounts to nothing. They failed to have a good New Year's Eve multiple times, and I found that to be pretty funny. Eventually, this leaves the older Titans tracking down the Masters of Time so they can kick their ass. It's so absurd, but at the same time, <laughs> it's pretty funny, so I give them credit for this. It's another episode where Robin tries to make the best team. The concept is a copy and paste of Baby Hands, The Best Robin, Robin Backwards, and Let's Get Serious. Ah, uh, here we go. But I would say it's a full-fledged copy of The Colors of Raven. But judging by the comments on my previous ranking videos, people don't give a shit when things get copied and pasted. So let's get on with the plot. Robin gets his hands on the prism from Beast Boy's memento box, so he uses said prism to divide the Titans' personalities and assemble the best ones for the team. What could possibly go wrong? After getting what he wants, he decides to split himself into five versions. I mean, they kind of did that already with Best Robin, but... Who cares? 
I would say this is another fun episode, mainly because we're dealing with the concept of splitting up the character's personality traits into five physical beings. And I would say the ending is pretty fun, with Robin separating himself into five beings, and then Silky separates himself into five beings as well. Eventually leading into a brawl between the two groups. I thought this was a decent episode, even though it's a copy and paste of the Colors of Raven episode. 